Hey guys, it's a friction here, or Tiger Tag 1 2, however you want to call me, I don't really care. And today we are all about the Leo. This is the Swedish tier 7 medium tank, and the Swedish are going to get a tier 8 premium medium tank sometime around this year. I'm not sure. But I have just started or okay, I finished the grind now, but I've uh, unlocked this vehicle a couple of weeks ago and I've played it quite a bit and um, the usual resonance that I heard about this tank is that either people hate it or they, they loved it and um, I was more on the side of loving it. Why do I love this vehicle? It has not a lot of crazy aspects to it. Its armor is pretty damn bad, its uh, hit points aren't special. Its gun is 105mm, which is the specialty of it, but also kind of where the gripes do lie with the people that are playing this tank. Now right there you can see we just put a big one into the Amex 12T. Now the alpha damage is 300, so we did definitely low roll right there. And what you'll see just in a second right here is... There's going to be a little wheelie, wheelie, wheeled guy rolling up, rolling up over here and putting a high explosive shell right into our face. A high explosive shell right there, petting our cupola on top and doing 300 damage. So yeah, we just definitely lost about a third of our HP. And that is, no, a fourth, one fourth, almost, nah, almost a third. That is definitely not so nice. So, why do I enjoy this tank? And I think the main reason why I like this vehicle is its gun and its gun depression. This vehicle kind of combines quite a few things. It combines a gun that at tier 7 is very, very okay. At tier 8 is going to be struggling quite a bit. And at tier 9 you can basically throw out the window. But... Anything below tier 7, like tier 5 and tier 6, they're just going to be feeling the pain. And since tier 7 is not always going to be up tiered, um, or just going to be up tiered to tier 8, you can still work with this gun quite nicely if you try to, you know, try to play with it. So what I've noticed is that although the gun only sports 155 millimeters of penetration, you can really work with that. You can even work with the high explosive shells, which only sport about 38 millimeters, no, 53 millimeters of penetration, excuse me, and that can work too. Now the rate of fire for the standard gun without any equipment is like 5.33 rounds per minute, and uh, the dispersion values are pretty bad. The aim time with 3 seconds is also pretty bad, uh, especially if you compare it to the um, <coughs> excuse me, the 75mm gun that you had previously on the predecessor, but still you can make it work. So what have I noticed, the, the thing is just the alpha damage at tier 7 rolling around with 300 alpha is just a very awesome feeling, you feel very very powerful. So a place like Abbey right here, the monastery that we are in right here, if you can hold the middle bar and you can actually dictate the, the combat and uh, the engagements and you can just kind of choose where you want to fight them, what ends up happening is, well you're going to be doing quite a lot of damage if they're not paying a lot of attention to you. 155 millimeters is not a lot of pen, but if you get like those weakly and very lightly armored vehicles like the uh, M4190 GF that just completely ignored me, or the T50-2 that is definitely not coming up here to engage us, right? Wait, what? He's moving up, and yeah, he's dead. Well, then this vehicle can do some serious damage. That's what I've noticed while playing. Now, I've also just unlocked, okay, a few weeks back, I've unlocked the Comet, and the Comet is, I think... Better liked than the Leo, but at the same time, I've enjoyed the Leo more because the alpha damage kind of speaks to me. I'm not a huge fan of the high DPN but low damage off the gun with the comment because there are quite a few instances where you're going to be bouncing and uh, maybe you put one shell into him or two shells 
But if you like penetrate with the Leo, you get one shell in and you're going to do the equivalent of two or three shells that the Comet did put in. And sometimes, well, you're going to be missing, sometimes you're going to be just um, bouncing off the vehicle. And I just, I'm just a, more of a fan of uh, doing massive amounts of damage with a single shot. And we've already accumulated 3000 damage. In this short amount of time right here, since I do have a very good crew, we did just about almost finish this T26 E4, a very heavily armored tier 8 American premium tank that lost almost 900 HP to us while his back was facing us. So this vehicle certainly can dish out the pain if it wants to and if you get the right position. That is also one of the reasons why I like it. It coupled with having no armor, okay, armor would, would have been nice, but I think then the balancing would have been quite difficult. But having this coupled with great mobility, a vehicle that can really get around the map without any issue, and then having such a gun with great gun depression, like right here, if I stop it right here, you can see that we can aim down, I'm gonna just use the free cam real fast, we can aim down at him while he's down here and he just drove into the wall. He was definitely going to die. And our profile is tiny. Now, I know, uh, I think it's about, I'd have to check. I think it's about 8 degrees of gun depression or, or 10 degrees. That might be, that might be true as well. But the gun depression allows you to be quite um, competitive in such areas. So right here. <laughs> we have a tiny profile what ends up happening obviously is he drives into the wall and uh, since the french wheeled vehicles are very very badly um, at maneuvering in tight-knit spaces what ends up happening is that we do finish him off because we have that crazy amount of alpha damage now if he would uh, if we would have been playing the comets um, he probably would have gotten away because there would have been at least two shots for us to take him out. And because we were able to put one nice big round into him, he died pretty damn quickly. So right now, at this moment of the match, I've noticed that my team is not faring too well. <laughs> now, I've, I had had, I, I had things to shoot at for the entirety of the seven minutes that we have played this game now. So I never really had time to switch a flank to try and go out and help these guys by being there immediately. One of the downsides of this vehicle right here, you can see it. Rate of fire is not the best. 5.3 rounds is not going to be able to compete with the Italian tier 6 or tier 7 version uh, of the medium vehicles. And it's going to be quite difficult for us to, uh, to win this match with this rate of fire and with only 32 HP remaining. But what you can say is that if you do give this vehicle a chance, you might enjoy it. But there's still a quite big possibility that you do not enjoy it, especially if you like medium tanks that have very good turret armor or hull armor. Then this def this vehicle is definitely going to be uh, a bit of a downgrade for you because it doesn't give you the hull armor, the turret armor that you need to utilize quite a lot of the gun depression or quite uh, the gun depression that this vehicle comes equipped with. Like 10 degrees of gun depression on a hill, you can really work very nicely on ridge lines and do massive amounts of damage. So this shot actually did manage to penetrate the T-34 85M and uh, I think it made our damage toll up to 4,900 something damage and that is pretty damn crazy. I don't think I would have been able to do that amount of damage with the Comet, uh, let alone with any other, with the T-20 maybe, because it's a 90mm gun, but it has better penetration, but I think worse mobility. But at the same time, if we look at the Leo, it is certainly one of a kind. A gun of this caliber at a tier a tier 7, but with uh, a very mobile kind of vehicle, definitely will give you quite nice um, 
abilities in certain situations but it might not be a vehicle for everyone i've noticed that this is probably one of my favorite tier 7 medium tanks um, it's close close with the comet but i think it's a little bit better because uh, of the alpha that i enjoy more and uh, i'm really looking forward to the premium version that is coming out um, this year somewhere uh, the Lansen C, the tier A premium uh, Swedish medium tank that will give you a crew trainer if you don't already own the, um, what was it called, the Stritzwagen 81 or something like that because they'll be releasing tier 9, tier 8 and tier 10 medium tanks for the, British uh, the Swedish tech tree someday so that's going to be exciting and I'm going to be looking forward for that and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a short one, but I thought I'd just show you guys some nice gameplay that I had in the Leo. And uh, talk a little bit about why I enjoy this tank so much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.